people ask, where do you get your ideas? Right here. All this is my magician's toy shop. I'm Ray Bradbury. This is... Doctor, I have your visitor's permit from Meadowbrook. I'm faxing it now. Please. Dr. Arnold Fellows here to interview prisoner number 10069. so quiet in here. Yes. I just kicked the radio to death. Don't worry. I'm really not violent, except to machines that go yak, yak, yak. So you're Brock, Albert Brock. The murderer. Excuse me. Welcome to Tranquility. This will cost you $300. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Well, uh, shall we begin? Sure, sure. Whatever you say, Doc. I know. That's another $300. Suppose you, uh, Tell me when you first started to hate the telephone. Oh, at first I loved them. I mean, when I was growing up, we had them all over in the kitchen, the bathroom, and our cars. Then when I was 16, my folks gave me my first video phone. Only they were so new, no one else in town had one, so I had nobody I could call. But then, Emily Foster, prettiest girl in town, got one. I started to get real close. But the phone changes you. Even if it has a picture, it drains your personality. So what comes through the other end is some cold fish of a voice saying the wrong things, changing the meaning on you. Next thing you know, you've made an enemy. 
But the phone's useful. Essential to all our lives. Couldn't you adjust? <laughs> Why are we always adjusting to machines? They're like spoiled kids, always making demands. We're adults. We should have control over them. And the telephone just sits there and demands to be used. Mr. Jessup, good. I wanted to show you the new plans for the information center I drew up. Oh, excuse me, Bob. Jessup here. I've just hit a hole in one. Had to tell you. At the seven. First time the whole finance is here. You don't say. So you'll be buying drinks at the 19th. Remember what happened when cellulars first came in? At first, they were just supposed to be used for emergencies, if you got stuck in traffic or had a breakdown. But then, people couldn't resist using them. They always were calling, calling. And if it wasn't the telephone, it was the television and the radio, AMF, or the VCR, or the computer, or the fax machine, or the Walkman, or the Watchman, or the Discman, or the motion pictures at the corner multiplex, and then larger-than-life-in-your-own-living-room commercials coming at you from all directions, and phone poles, and junk fax. I understand, Mr. Brock. Please, calm down. Now, just, just finish your story. My whole day was one big listen. Good morning, Albert. Good morning, Agnes. It's time to get up on this marvelous day. The weather is going to be just great, with the temperature reaching a high of 70... <laughs> Yes, dear. Don't forget to pick up the pâté. Yes, dear. And the baked brie from Gourmet Goodies. And be sure to be home by 8, because the Dorfmans are coming over tonight. Oh, and would you mind picking up the clothes from the cleaners? Yes. Please wipe your feet. Please wipe your feet. Thank you. Have a nice day. Manana. El mercado. El mercado. Está abierto. Manana. Manana. El mercado. Mercado. Está abierto. Está abierto. El mercado. Está abierto. Manana. 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 El mercado. Do you miss your lapel phone, Doc? <laughs> no, no, no. I, um... I was uh, just thinking about your description of your day. So you felt a little uptight, huh? On the edge of a cliff. The next afternoon, I did what I did at the office. Which was? I poured a pitcher of coffee into the video phone system. And that helped? A lot. Then I got the idea at lunchtime of killing my lapel phone. Mm -hmm. I was outside enjoying my lunch when this, this computer poll obnoxious, shrill what did you eat computer for lunch, voice Mr. Brock? started Brock? yelling this is computer at poll number nine. What did you eat for lunch, Mr. Brock? Your early reply would be appreciated, Mr. Brock. Computer poll number nine relies on the cooperative. <laughs> felt even better. Felt great. It positively grew on me. I started to think, why not begin a one-man revolution? Deliver us from our conveniences. Convenient for who, I asked myself. For friends who feel like talking, regardless of what you have to do. For my office to find me, no matter where I am. 
Mr. Brock, Mr. Jessup just called. He can't seem to reach you on your lapel phone. He'd like you to get in touch with him right away. Come in, please, Mr. Brock. Touch. How I hate that phrase. Gripped, mauled, pounded by FM voices is more like it. I mean, there's literally no place where a person can go anymore to find some peace. Not the bathroom, not even your own car. Could I have a chocolate milkshake, please? I bought a chocolate milkshake and poured it into my fax machine. Is there any special reason why you chose a chocolate milkshake? It's my favorite flavor. <laughs> I see. I see. So, uh... So then, what happened? Silence. That's what happened. Wonderful, beautiful silence. I just sat in my car for a whole hour drinking it in. It was incredible. I, I felt drunk with freedom. Freedom, Mr. Brock? Yes, Doc. Freedom from one more damn note in the whole screeching symphony. But, um... Well, a symphony that enlarges our lives, Mr. Brock. You've heard of passive smoking, Doc? Well, of course you have. Well, there's passive listening, too. And we're being poisoned by it, whether we like it or not. Hmm. Go on. On my way home that night, I bought my weapons. You've heard of diathermics? Of course, I am a doctor. <laughs> yeah, but not a medical one. Anyway, I picked up a diathermy machine. Electric current, static, interference? You got it. suggest that um, so far your behavioral pattern is not very uh, well, practical. Why didn't you just start a fraternity of radio haters, circulate petitions, get legal and constitutional rulings? After all, this is still a democracy. I'm that thing called the minority. I did protest. I tried a petition. Everyone laughed. Everyone else loved their audiovisual cacophony. I was the one out of step. Well, maybe you should have taken it like a good soldier. I mean, for the majority of people, fax machines, phones, walkmans, watchmans, they mean freedom. The freedom to live a more efficient, trouble-free life. But you, you selfishly tried to impose your minority idea of freedom on them. But the majority rules. They may rule, but they're not always right. The majority have gone too far. Don't you see that? They figured that if a little music was charming and keeping in touch was good, 
that a lot of a good thing would be that much better, but it's not, because we've become dependent. We're prisoners of our own progress, manacled by squawking machines. So, what's a man to do, Doc? Get an equalizing machine. Ain't that obvious? I got home that night to a completely hysterical wife because she had been out of touch for three hours, Dad. That's why I decided I had to murder him. You decided to kill your wife? Oh, Albert, where have you been? I couldn't get in touch with you all day. In touch, Agnes! In touch! God, how I hate that friend! The phone! Where's your briefcase? Don't tell me you've lost the facts. What's going on? Right over Please wipe your feet. Please wipe your feet. Thank you. Ah! Albert, where'd you get that gun? Ah! Ah! destroying personal and public property. I'd do it all over again, Doc. So you have no remorse? Uh -uh. You don't want any help from the Office of Mental Health? Uh-uh. You're ready to take the consequences? Of course I am. You'll see, this is the beginning. I'm the vanguard of a small segment of the population that is tired of noise of having their privacy constantly invaded every minute with music, voices, do this, do that. The revolt has begun. Somehow, somewhere, what I've done will have an effect. My name will go down in history. Mr. Brock, if you will just give us a chance, I'm sure that we can rehabilitate you. Now, you have a wife, a family. Surely you'd like to rejoin them. It'll take time, of course. But the seed has been sown. <laughs> they got worldwide coverage on TV, radio, and in the newspapers. Sound bites, sight bites. In fact, watch for a sudden spurt in the sale of chocolate milkshakes. <laughs> and then? Then keep your eyes and ears open for small islands of silence. People killing their lapel phones. People just simply tuning out. That'll be the beginning. Don't you want to get out of here? I just want to go back to my nice, quiet cell. Please. I see. I've enjoyed our little talk, Doc. Nice, quiet chat. Yes. But... Listen.
Chloe, have, uh, have this replaced, will you? Well, fellows, what's the prognosis on Brock? He's top priority, you know. I just got back, Inspector. Give me a moment to write up my notes. No need for lengthy reports. Just give it to me in a nutshell. Well, he's obviously suffering from, uh... Dad, it's Lee. The money didn't come through. feelings to him, of persecution. Hour, Can we rehabilitate him, Doctor? That's what I want to know. We can't have people running around destroying our modern means of communication. Yes, probably, but, uh... Dad, the messenger's here for your monthly reports, Dad, Dr. Fellows. Are you there? Can I send him in, or will you be faxing him? In a minute. They need them right away. Dad? Dad? Later, son. Are what are you talking about, Fellows? Dad. What's happening in there? I can't hear you. Look, Dad, I'm going to fax you. Now, I can't what see you now. What are you doing? My whole day was one big listen. Dad, I'm going to fax you. I'm sending you a fax. Your video phone seems to be on the blink. Can you hear me, fellas? Somewhere, somehow, what I've done will have an effect. Dr. Fellas, what shall I tell the messenger? Get me a chocolate milkshake. 